So my name is uh, Blake Mikoski, yeah. and I'm the founder and chief shoe giver is my title of Tom's. Yeah. Tom's didn't start with the idea for a shoe. In fact, it was the absence of a shoe that started it all. Argentina was beautiful. The music, the colors, the food, the people. But as soon as I left the city, I noticed this need. I knew nothing about shoes and very little about giving. But I had a simple idea. What if a for-profit shoe company used giving as its business model? One where for every pair of shoes sold, a new pair would be given to a child in need. One for one. They'd be shoes for a better tomorrow. Tomorrow shoes. So I called them Toms. Um, so I believe you started your career as a tennis mom? Yes. At university? That is correct, yeah. <laughs> when, I was, when I was younger, uh, I wanted to be a professional tennis player. And so I played tennis my, like all my hours of my youth growing up and wow. then went to a university on tennis scholarship and uh, then I had an injury so uh, my tennis career ended but I'm kind of thankful that it did because it's a hard it's a hard way to make a living being a tennis player. Yeah, it's a blessing in disguise yeah, I think where so. you are now. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and you started a series of businesses. Yes. I believe one of them is EZ Laundry. Yeah, yes. How did, how did you come about wanting to create? <laughs> well, it was, it was because actually of the, the accident when I was a tennis player. So um, what happened was in, in the university, I, was on the, I had the crutches, you know, yeah, to yeah. get around because my, my Achilles tendon had a problem and I was in a big cast. Okay. And so um, I couldn't carry my laundry uh, to the place to get it done because of the crutches. And so I was trying to find someone that could come and pick up the laundry to do it for me. Yeah. Um, but there was, there was nothing like that at where I was living. And okay. so we, my, my roommate at the time in college and university and I decided to start a business where we would pick up people's laundry and, and deliver it back to them. And we called it wow. Easy Laundry. <laughs> so wow. Very... That was the beginning of my entrepreneur career. Oh my gosh. So did it just go from there then? Yeah, so then we ended up uh, opening one at uh, another university nearby, uh, and then over a period of about three years, we opened up at five different campuses around the United States. Very good. Yeah. Very and still good. there today. Yeah, still Very trucks good. are driving around picking up people's clothes. Oh my gosh, yeah. amazing. And so, was that the main, that, that was the starter, I take it, yeah. in, your, in the world of entrepreneurship? Yeah, that was, I mean, I think I didn't even know what the word entrepreneur meant when, when I started that. Okay. I was 19, uh, and, and people said, oh, this is, this is very entrepreneurial, and you're a young entrepreneur, and so I looked up the word entrepreneur, <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is, a, this is kind of, does sound like me, you know, likes to create mm -hmm. things and invent new ideas and, and build build a business around him so uh so yeah it was a I didn't know it at the time but I guess it was the beginning of my entrepreneur career very good very good um another thing were you involved in the tv industry and in, in media yes yeah, so um my sister and I were on the reality tv show the amazing race yeah yeah I don't know did they have it here no but I know it okay, you know it okay <laughs> So we were on the race, and uh, basically it's a TV show program where you have a partner, and you race around the world, and the winners get a million dollars. And uh, you race, um, we raced for 31 days straight, wow. uh, and we lost by four minutes. So, I believe you came second place. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it was really painful. Oh. Uh, but, uh, but it was a great experience. What inclined you to apply? I think it's just the adventure, you know, get yeah. the, you know, the idea that, you know, like to get to travel the world. Yeah. And, and this was before Tom, so it was before I had all these travel experiences. Yeah. So, uh, and my sister and I are really close, and so it was something, you know, we enjoyed doing. Lovely, lovely. Um, so now going into Tom's, what, can you explain to us what was the idea initially? Sure. So, you know, initially I was actually in Argentina uh, and uh, on, just on vacation, on holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was there, I noticed there were a lot of kids in the streets without shoes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I saw this for a couple of weeks as I, was, as I was on my holiday there. Uh, and then towards the end of my vacation, I met a couple of women in this cafe and we were talking 
Uh, they were there were two of them from the U.S. and one was from Europe, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was asking them what they were doing in Argentina, and they explained that they were there doing volunteer work, mm -hmm. and they were doing a uh, what they called a shoe drive. Basically, they were going around collecting slightly used shoes from wealthy families to give to you know poor children okay. that desperately needed shoes, and specifically so that the kids could go to school, because in Argentina in these neighborhoods. They had some schools, but the kids had to have a uniform to go to school, and many of the kids couldn't afford the uniform and the shoes. And so the, I thought it was really a, a great idea that these women were taking time to help these kids, and so they invited me to come help distribute the shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I saw how excited and happy the kids were to get the shoes, I wanted to, to help to do more. Um, but my... Um, whole life has been as an entrepreneur at this point you know I've been doing mm -hmm. different businesses for 10 years and I had no experience doing charity yeah. and so the idea of going and asking for donations and for people to you know support was was really actually that was more scary to me than starting a business yeah, yeah. so for me my idea was okay instead of looking for charity and donations to help these kids get the shoes they need why not start a business mm -hmm. where every time we sell a pair of shoes we would give a pair away. Mm -hmm. And that way the business can fund the giving yeah. rather than just asking people for donations. So instead of saying, you know, Juliet, you know, can I have, you know, money to help these kids? Mm -hmm. I say, please buy a pair of our shoes. And when you do, we will give a pair and make it really simple and easy for anyone to participate. And so that was the idea originally to help these kids in Argentina, a very small group. Um, but it became very popular first in the United States and now all over the world and uh, we've helped many many kids now very good so I believe that's the one for one concept yes yeah, so we call it one for one so you buy a pair and we give a pair but it's always one person purchasing and one person being helped very good it's very inspiring the philosophy <laughs> thank you very I must much. say it it inspires me to do something oh like fantastic you did. <laughs> thank you um, However, the concept in France isn't common. No. You don't find businesses really mixing business with charity. Yeah. Um, if I'm correct, you started the marketplace. Yes. What Can you talk a little bit about it? Sure. I mean, at first, I think what's interesting to talk about is just you know, the, the French kind of attitude towards, um, you know, businesses and charity combining. You know, I, you know, having come to France a few times now, it's 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 so different than the yeah. experience in the United States or even just in you know, and even in UK the or UK, Germany yeah. or other places. The French seem very skeptical about this idea of how how can you do business and help people at the same time? And yeah. Does it really work? And do you really give the shoes? And so it's it's a big part of my job is to. You know, to explain the origin that we've been doing this for nine years. Mm. We've helped 35 million children now. Like, you know, we work with the best, you know, nonprofits around the world and NGOs. And so, but it's, but it's a really, it's a tough market. It really is. I mean, I love coming here. But um, for Tom's, you know, it, it's not as, um, it seems like it makes a lot of sense to me. Like, you know, yeah. buy a pair, you give a pair. But to the French, it, it, it doesn't. And yeah. so it's important that we are able to educate, you know, on not only our shoes and our eyesight programs and things, but how everyday purchases can make a difference. Of you know? course. And that leads to the marketplace. So part of what we were creating with the marketplace was the idea that there's other companies out there that are starting to emulate Tom's mm -hmm. and to incorporate giving into the sale of their product. And I think that's really a great thing for the future of business. So we're not just looking for charity and government to solve the problems, but having business at the table as well. And so, um, you know, I hope that this is something that, you know, while today it's not a common thinking in mm -hmm. France, that over time it will be, and I hope that Tom's is part of that. Very good. Well, I hope I hope we catch on to it <laughs> as well because it's a great concept. Um, to explain a little bit, maybe perhaps they, Tom's isn't as big as it is in over sure. in Paris yeah. as it is in the UK or America. Um, can you explain to us exactly, like, from the start, who designs the product? Sure. And how does the product actually get to the people Children. in need? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the giving product, we give 
uh, three different types of shoes. Mm -hmm. So we give um, a black canvas school shoe that's been designed with a thicker bottom because the kids, if it's their wear. only pair, yeah. they're going to wear out. Yeah, yeah. They have a, a, like an athletic shoe the kids can wear, uh, and then like a cold weather boot. And those are designed only for giving, not for selling. Okay. So, and those are the shoes that we give every time we sell a pair. And so um, we work with these different uh, nonprofit uh, NGO organizations around the world in 60 countries. Mm -hmm. and, and we choose partners that are really uh, well, um, well integrated into the communities mm -hmm. and very well trusted. Uh, and uh, and that we know that when we give them the shoes, they'll make sure the kids need that need them get them, yeah. and then also replenish them when they were out of them. Yeah. And so it's a uh, it's we spend a lot of time picking the right partners, and um, and these are partners like UNICEF and Care and yeah. and, and, and you know very big NGOs, but then also some small NGOs too. Mm -hmm. um, and we do a lot of giving throughout Africa, throughout Asia, South America. Um, even some Eastern European countries okay. as well now. Um, so, so it's really a, these partners that have already a lot of work going on in these communities that are helping distribute the shoes. They hold the expertise. Yeah, exactly. Right? Okay. Um, with, in terms of the product, who exactly designs the products? Is it... Do you have a say in it, or is it you in a team? Yeah, well now it's a team. I mean, you know, initially I did all the design yeah, yeah. in the early days, um, but now there's a team of probably 20 people that work in the Los Angeles studio okay. that design all the products. And they come up with the new concepts, like the coffee, yeah. the yes. eyewear, yes. the bag. Yes, 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 yeah, absolutely. Good. Very good. Um, well, with your work comes a lot of traveling. Yes. What has been your fondest memory oh, of traveling man. the world? So many places. It's a tough one. It's a very tough question. Um, you know, I really uh, have, have had some wonderful experiences in Ethiopia. It's one of the countries that is really dear to my heart. Yeah. Um, I love the people in Ethiopia. I love the very diverse uh, landscape of Ethiopia. Um, we do a lot of giving in Ethiopia. We have a factory in Ethiopia. Oh, um, so, uh, so Ethiopia is one of my favorite places um, for, for work travel. Mm. For holiday, I love to go to the Maldives. Um, oh, it's my favorite place <laughs> to go surfing. Um, so I go there every year to go surfing one time a year. I'm actually getting ready to go again. In oh, June. yeah? Yeah. Oh. It's always me and just my, my buddies. So it's just a guy's trip. Oh, nice. Um, my wife doesn't like that so much. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so we go and we go for a week of surfing and stay on a boat. And it's Lovely. So nice. yeah. Lovely. I'm very jealous. Yeah. <laughs> what exactly are the current plans for Tom's? Current and future. Sure. Near future. So, so right now, one of the big focuses we have is just expanding our footwear line. Mm -hmm. You know, we started with the, the, the traditional Alpargata, the, the canvas slip-on. Now we're moving into, you know, fashion sneakers and boots and all the sandals and all different types of shoes because mm -hmm. we realize that, you know, there's such an opportunity to grow the footwear business so that we can help more kids get the shoes they need. Mm -hmm. So the real focus right now, especially in France, is, is on footwear. Mm -hmm. We also offer eyewear and and we have bags now, and those are smaller programs that we have, mm -hmm. um, but continuing to develop those and let those kind of grow organically mm -hmm. um, is, is, is a big part of what we're doing as well. Yeah. And as I think about the future, I think it's, you know, is, you know, we really have a long-term perspective because we feel like that in order to have really long impact in these communities, mm -hmm. it's more important to grow organically and, and through kind of the right channels than to grow really quickly. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so that's what you know, we're kind of working on building the business in France and other European countries right now that way. Okay. Okay, so as you know, we are a global lifestyle magazine. Yeah. Um, what lifestyle across the world or way of living have you been most inspired by or perhaps most want to adapt your life to? <laughs> the surfers. <laughs> the surfers? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when I see people like in Costa Rica or yeah. Nicaragua or Hawaii, that, you know, they just live the chill, the chill yeah. on the beach and surfing. And <laughs> I mean, good. I don't think, I, it's more of a aspiration of holiday for me, yeah. but it is a good lifestyle. <laughs> I wish we all had that lifestyle. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> okay, well, as we wrap up, what would you like to say to the people of France if there's a concept whether it's to do with you personally or with your company? Sure. What would you like to 
delivered. I think the thing that I'm, I'm most interested in, in communicating is that this idea that really, you know, you know, giving uh, it feels really good and it's a great, yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of reasons to give back and to help those who are less fortunate. But it also is okay for it to be part of business. And, and that if it's part of business, we can give more, mm-hmm. you know. So instead of just asking for donations from people, if we incorporate giving uh, into uh, the fabric of the business, uh, it can be really powerful. And I think what's important to understand with Tom's is, you know, we started nine years ago. Yeah. And when we started, no one was doing this. Uh, and so it was a very new idea. And, and, and we only created a business so that we could do the giving. Like that was the purpose of the whole project. And so a lot of people I think think who don't know us or, or, or new think that Tom's built, the, we built a business and then started giving. But it's actually the opposite. We started giving first and we, through the giving, realized we need to build a business to fund the giving. Yeah. And so a big part of you know what I'm trying to do by being here in Paris and, 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 and talking with people like yourself is to communicate that, that, that A, we've been doing this since the beginning and that's why we exist. Mm. Uh, and B, you know, that, 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 that it's okay to incorporate, um, you know, doing something good with your purchases because we're all going to buy shoes, we're yeah. all going to buy bags, we're going to buy eyewear. Why not buy a pair of sunglasses that changes someone's life? Yeah than just buying another pair of sunglasses just for yourself. And so I think that, I think that fashion can be a great catalyst yeah. for, uh, for making a difference in the world. But it's going to change, it needs to change your perspective a little bit. For sure. A wider perspective of, of, of the uses of fashion and consumerism. So I, it would be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of years. Yeah. Well, I hope they catch on. Yeah. I hope so. Great. Uh, a little word in French? Uh, I, I, we. Oui. <laughs> it's like, uh, I know, uh, merci. Uh, I know, my French is, is horrible. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good enough. Yeah. All you need is bonjour, merci. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for, okay. for being here. Great. And thank you for accepting the interview. Yes, absolutely. Great, so, thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>